The average man in his lifetime will eat 50 metric tons worth of food. That's the equivalent of 140 cows, 10,000 salmon, or 300,000 potatoes. It's a hell of a lot of food to put through the digestive system. This week, Evening takes a voyage deep into inner space. Katrina puts herself and her guts under pressure. Why can't I do this? And I'll be finding out how the way you were born can influence the bacteria in your gut. Irish eating habits have changed a lot over the years, and we're now eating a more diverse diet than ever. Excuse me, guys, can I have for two seconds? Have either of you eaten anything unusual? Crocodile steak. Tongue of horse, horse tongue. Horse tongue? Yeah. Probably snails or something on holidays. Uh, snails. A snail? Rooster feet. Liver is just so disgusting to me. And when I was in France, actually, they eat this thing. It's like raw meat and raw eggs, like mashed up. That wasn't nice. <laughs> if I were to put snails on your plate or tongue. No way. No, no way. But just how does our body process this food? And how much do we actually know about our gut? Food is essential for our bodies to function. But while we've all heard about the importance of having a balanced diet and eating healthily, not many of us know what actually happens to this food when it's inside our bodies. Andre Broadcorp is a Chagask research scientist with a particular interest in how food is digested in the stomach. He's actually gone so far as to volunteer to swallow a tiny pill camera so he can track the movement of a specific protein as it moves through his digestive system. There's actually surprisingly little knowledge on how food is broken down within the gastrointestinal tract. So what I'm interested in is how proteins behave during that process. So we're going to just ask you to swallow the tablet. This capsule is going to take three pictures every second of your gut, and we're going to let it run for eight hours. So by that time, we will have seen all your stomach, all your small bowel, and some of your colon. Do you want to pull it out there for yeah. me? Very good. Why, why is it flashing? Well, it's flashing because inside our guts it's dark and one of the main purposes of this tablet is so we can see the mucosa inside. So it needs to light the way so we can see the lining of your gut. We're good to go. Now it's specially coated to go down nice and easily. So down the hatch. Well done. It's a few weeks later and I'm paying a visit to Andre's office in Chagask Moor Park to find out what the camera recorded when it went through his gut. So Andre, this is the footage of you swallowing a camera. Yeah, what you see here is the pyloric valve. Here we go. <laughs> uh, you look into my pyloric valve. And that's basically massaging food. If you have a steak in here, that's what it does. It massages the food until it is small enough to be further, further digested. And what this is, is um, the alpha lactalbumin, the protein, the whey protein, just arriving in the stomach and coagulates, basically uh, sticks, sticks together. So what we're looking at, are we looking at things coming from the esophagus there? Yeah. There's a reason why I did physics. I'm, I'm quite squeamish and I don't like looking at this, but it's quite unusual to have footage like this to see inside someone's digestive system. It is very unusual. Uh, it is used as a diagnostic tool by uh, gastroenterologists, but it's the first time that has been used for, for food, for a scientific study. If we understand how digestion work, we can design or create uh, better or new foods that are suitable for individual needs. Let's say a, a triathlete or a marathon runner or an elderly person uh, has different uh, nutritional needs than uh, somebody that wants to lose weight. One of the things we do know, however, is that food is broken down in the stomach with the help of various acids and enzymes. This has the added benefit of killing bacteria that might make us ill. But what about the good bacteria? They're killed, simple as that. But depending on the matrix, depending on the surrounding of the bacteria, they might survive. So uh, they survive pretty good in a matrix such as yogurt and dairy, dairy proteins because they buffer the pH. So by matrix, you mean in this sense, the other foods that we're ingesting at the same time? Exactly. What we try to do is that, that the consumer doesn't need to think about that. 
So that, that's really our, our aim, that we have some kind of food or functional food uh, uh, that, that can be consumed and the probiotic bacteria that they actually survive the stomach. So that's one of our aims and we had one particular project and one of the solutions is encapsulation. Encapsulation is a process where active sensitive food ingredients like probiotic bacteria are coated with a protective shield so they're not damaged or destroyed by either the production or the digestion process. Instead, they can deliver their health benefits to the right part of the body at the right time without being damaged in the gut. We've all seen the ads for probiotics that promise to make our guts healthier, but helping these probiotics make their way through our digestive system is where encapsulation technology really comes into its own. Sinead Blyell founded her company Anna Biotechnologies after completing her PhD at Chagas Moor Park. She aims to meet the needs of the food industry who want to create functional foods that provide health benefits to the body. What we are doing is actually making food grade capsules but micron sized, like a mini Smartie. So if you think of a Smartie but so small that you need a microscope to see it and we're making coatings, maybe only one coating or three or four coatings around this material so that the capsules can be, uh, protect probiotics and that can go into a beverage, a muesli bar, a powdered product. So what encapsulation does is it ensures that whole population, that whole massive family of probiotics is delivered and is happily sitting in the gut after you've eaten your, your yogurt or your muesli bar, whatever it may be. So you're making sure that it's getting opened at the right time, at the right address, not beforehand and not afterwards. Exactly. So where does Sinead see encapsulation technology going in the future? There's a big trend in functional foods moving towards vegetarian friendly ingredients, more vegetable proteins. Milk is still very sexy and very popular and we maintain that market, but it's also important to try and find new innovative ingredients like extracts from citrus fruit that can still be used in encapsulation. But it's also important balancing, can those ingredients function in encapsulation and are they allowed in the regulations for food? So it's a matter of fixing the ingredient and fitting it to the correct market, whether it be sport, infant formula or general dietary supplements for human health.